Hi there, and welcome to another video tutorial from Conflower Iris. Today I'll be making this wooden box, or decorating it rather, for Father's Day. This is a wooden box I got from the works in the UK. I'll leave a link in the blog and some more details in the video description. Please do make sure to check them out. Before painting a base layer on the box, it's important to remove all the metal findings. It just makes everything so much easier and keeps these looking crisp and neat. I'm just using a screwdriver and make sure to keep all the little screws safe. I'm using a plastic ball for this. To begin with, I'm using some acrylic gesso and white and applying this with a wash brush. So I have a dedicated brush for gesso because it leaves quite chalky residue sometimes on the bristles that's difficult to clean out, so I wouldn't use your best professional paintbrushes for this. Gesso, if you've never worked with it before, it's kind of an undercoat for paint. It's really useful on canvases and materials like wood and MDF, particularly because the paint tends to absorb straight into these media. Using gesso, it has this chalky finish, because it actually has chalk within it and this prevents the paint from soaking through this layer into the layer underneath. This doesn't however stop the gesso sinking into the wood, which is why I applied two coats, first of all, and then I went over and sanded the box, and then painted with gesso again. This helps seal the wood as well, so make sure to really stipple it in to any areas where the wood is quite rough, or where the grain isn't very even. After the first two coats of gesso, I used a sanding block that I got from a hardware shop and I'm just sanding around the outside edges, paying particular attention to the curves. This is where the wood tended to have a few rough areas. There was also a lip over the edge of the box that I removed by sanding and just going backwards and forwards keeps an even finish. If you go around in circles you can end up with some funny lines, but doing this achieves a really silky finish to the box. The top only required a light sanding. I didn't sand the inside because I knew I was going to seal this with some decoupage papers and some glue, but I beveled the inside edges just to make sure there were no sharp edges and really went over the areas where the box closure is because I knew I was going to apply some gilding wax and wanted a really smooth and shiny finish. After this process, I applied a further two coats of gesso and this really seals in the box. You can see it's much paler than when we started. I then went over with the sanding block again, very lightly this time, just to remove any areas that might have bubbled up. I'm using Crafter's Choice acrylic paint from Burnt Sienna and a flat gold tack on brush to paint over the outside of the box. I'm applying quite a thick coat and going through and stippling in to those areas where the wood grain isn't even. This is just what happens when you're working with a natural medium. You need to make sure that you really work it in. Even after drying, the first coat had some gaps in it that had just happened with thermal expansion when using the heat gun to dry. Around the edges in particular, it's important to work it in. But if you are working in like this, make sure not to overload your brush and make sure to go around the outside edges and just neaten up the finish after you've applied paint to this area. Once this is dried, I applied a second coat of paint just on the outside edges because I was going to mostly obscure the inside. To decorate the inside I'm using some tissue paper from Paper Mania. You could use any decoupage paper but I really like this one because it goes sort of transparent in the background and you just end up with some text and some images in a collage fashion. And since it's already in a collage, it's fairly easy to place together on the inside. I'm using some decoupage glue. This is the Deco Mache from First Edition in matte. So I'm tearing some strips of paper and using a natural bristle brush. This is just a cheap one that I got from the pound shop. I'm applying a layer of glue, then applying the paper, pushing it down first with my fingers, and then applying more glue on top. It's important to have a hard bristle because this helps you get rid of any creases and crinkles and really push down the paper. Any areas with this paper that still appear white mean that you haven't got enough glue underneath, so it's really easy to apply. The paper's also 
fragile yet strong. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but when you apply the paper, you can lift it up again and it will remain strong. But when you need to tear it, a torsional motion will help to tear the paper off. The curves on this box were more difficult to cover than the rest of the areas, so there are two ways of doing it. The first way is to cut a strip with a very straight edge, apply this to the corner and put it in. This means you have no creases and a very smooth finish. The other way, on the other side, is to apply a larger piece and allow the crinkles to happen naturally. So to do this you have to really work in the corner and the bottom and then work up to the sides and apply glue underneath the creases as well. And this makes sure that everything is sealed and isn't going to come apart. I've then applied an extra layer of glue over the top just to seal everything. At the top of the box I'm using this lovely mask by Hunky Dory and I'm using the world map portion. Using masking tape and sticking it to my hands so it's not overly sticky, I'm making sure the mask is secured. And then I'm using a palette knife to apply some Cosmic Shimmer Texture Paste in New Gold. This is one of the film in colours. And just roughly applying some paste down. I then switch to a plastic palette knife with a longer edge. This is going to help me smooth out the paste and apply it to the larger areas where the smaller palette knife wanted to remove the paste rather than apply it. You could also do this with an old credit card or um, some sort of squeegee. It does make it a little bit easier than using the palette knives if you're unfamiliar with them. And when you peel off you get this beautiful effect even though it looks like nothing with a stencil on. Just be sure to clean your stencil really well. I left it to dry for a couple of hours and then I came back and using some Pevio Gilding Wax in Antique Gold, I'm applying Gilding Wax around the inside edges. I feel this really finishes off the box and it also hides any of the excess paper that I couldn't quite tear off. This Gilding Wax is really soft and easy to work with. When I'd applied this, I then went over with a paper towel and buffed this up. It really adds shine and removes the excess and stops the two halves sticking together. To put everything back together, I'm screwing the hinges to the bottom section first and then applying the front clasp to the bottom section and the clasp to the top section. This means we can close the box and when we screw the hinges to the top section, everything's going to be perfectly aligned. I'd usually add much more decoration to boxes but since this is for my dad and he's quite a classy guy, he likes it nice and simple, I felt this was really effective and added a kind of vintage look and will look lovely on his desk. And that's the box finished. Thanks very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and maybe got a little bit inspired. If you'd like to see more videos with wooden boxes in the future, please let me know in the video description and I'll show you some different techniques. Thanks again, I'll leave you with some stills and I'll catch you next time.